Yes, Hi, Preeti. Shall we start? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. Can you hear me okay? Or would yes. you want me to wear my earphones? No, no, we can hear you. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Hope all of you are doing well during these COVID times. Department of Human Development, Mount Carmel College, Bengaluru, in collaboration with the Department of Human Development and Family Science, East Carolina University, Greenville, USA, extends a very warm welcome to all the participants for this think tank capacity building workshop on enhancing psychosocial well being of children and families in the healthcare settings. Before I begin, I would like to thank God Almighty for bringing us all together today to discuss one of the most important concerns related to children, as children are the most significant entity being the future of this world. Changes are inevitable and challenges are bound to come, and so we must be better prepared for it. Child life is one such field of study which enables the children to lead a normal life in difficult situations. Today, we all have come together for a think tank capacity building workshop with the aim of understanding and discussing the psychosocial concerns of children and families in healthcare settings. Don't forget, this is a follow up session to the talk given on child life services promoting psychological care for children in healthcare settings by Dr. P.P.P. Desai at the International Conference by the Department of Human Development, Mount Carmel College in February this year. Please check the MCC website if you are really interested in learning more about human development at Mount Carmel College, Bengaluru. The link is shared in the chat box. About the event, 126 participants from all over India have registered for this event. We have human development faculty members, undergraduate and postgraduate human development students, research scholars, and people working for the non-government organizations as part of this event. Uh, though the session for my freshers, the first year MSc human development postgraduate students batch of 2021 from Department of Human Development, Mount Carmel College, Bengaluru have not yet started, but they are today with us for this event. And I would like to welcome them to the department. So please get ready to take a flight to gain deeper knowledge and insights about human development field. And your journey will become uh, will begin from this very moment. About today's event, this is one and a half hour workshop to understand and dis discuss the psychosocial concerns of children and family in health healthcare. Now we have divided this one and a half hour into three parts. So the first 30 minutes, Dr. Preeti Pidsai will be delivering a lecture on child life services, uh, promoting psychological uh, care for children in healthcare settings. The next 30 minutes, we are going to have three breakout rooms led by experts in the field. So we will be moving you to different rooms. You just stay there wherever you are. And then the last 30 minutes is, is when we are coming back together for discussions. Please send all your questions in the chat box towards the end, and please don't forget to fill the feedback form. Wishing you all a very happy learning. Thank you. Now I will request my colleague, Ms. Shreya Dokre, to introduce the speaker, Dr. P. 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 Desai. Over to you, Shreya. Thank you, ma'am. Dr. Preeti P. Desai, India's first child life specialist, is an associate professor at East Carolina University in Greenville, North Carolina, where she teaches child life, child development, and diversity courses in human development and family science department. Prior to teaching, she's worked as a child life specialist at the Children's Healthcare of Atlanta, uh, the John Hopkins uh, Children's Center, and at the Kennedy Krieger Institute in Baltimore, where she worked directly with hospitalized children and their families to promote their adjustment and, and coping with illness and healthcare experiences. In India, she's worked for Chetna, a health education organization addressing the needs of children 
women and families in rural tribal and urban slum areas her academic credentials include a doctorate in human development and family studies and a masters in child development from the maharaja sayajirao university of baroda and a masters in public health from emory university usa and a bachelor's degree in psychology from gujarat university india dr preeti has conducted numerous presentations and workshops around the world and serves as a volunteer leader and educator with organizations including operation smile as well as the kg patel children's hospital and can kids and kids can in india dr preeti has served on 12 operation smile missions around the world and has served on several education platforms to develop awareness and capacity building for psychological needs of children with health concerns she initiates and directs camps for children with complex heart defects uh, in east carolina in eastern north carolina dr preeti's published work includes research and review articles in peer reviewed journals as well as textbook chapters she has received many awards throughout her career including child life's highest professional honor the distinguished service award in 2013 she has a very intriguing collection of camels which is her favorite animal above all dr preeti cherishes, cherishes the precious time she spends with her family we are all pleased to have you ma'am over to you thank you so much shreya for the wonderful Preeti, we can't hear and, uh, you. Thank you. Can't hear me. Oh God. No, now we can't. Okay. Hold on. My volume. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Done. Right. Done. Right. Okay. Good. perfect thank you so again thank you so much for the introduction and again thank you so much um sujata for inviting me and for making this collaboration happen i'm so excited for this opportunity thank you all to all the participants uh, the ones who were here before in february and to the new uh, participants so we're looking forward to a very interactive time together and uh, to some uh, thinking and brainstorming so i uh, appreciate the opportunity i'm uh, uh, thankful to parminder and deepa and uh, swati to be uh, available as facilitators for the breakout groups so because time is short i'm going to go ahead and start my um, first part of the workshop and um, and then we'll do the the breakout rooms and uh, sujata the will someone just give me a little hint that we have 5 minutes left or something like that no before we do the breakouts okay and then you'll have the video in the breakout right okay so i'm going to try to share second can you see the window yes okay perfect so uh, the we're going to talk about creating child friendly healthcare environments which actually if we everyone's uh, you know reading the newspapers our government is talking about uh, post or during covid outbreaks to increase the pediatric care and make it child friendly and um, some of what they discuss is you know just colorful curtains and bed sheets and um, which is a great start to uh, create a more colorful environment yet there's a lot more to child friendly healthcare so we're going to discuss that and how uh, people like us in human development family science fields human development fields can play an integral part in um, making the whole healthcare experience more child friendly less anxiety provoking more resilience building uh, for children so we'll that's sort of the idea and then we'll um, have everyone discuss themselves some ideas so give me one second is my presentation still there 
Yes. Okay, one second. I'm seeing just the people on the screen, not my presentation. Okay, great. Okay, so we'll briefly touch base upon rights of children in hospitals uh, based on UNICEF rights, because that gives us a foundation to advocate for these services within our government, our private bodies, um, because India is a signatory to the UN Convention on the Rights. Introduction to what is child life um, for, for the new participants, and then just get straight into how we assess children's stress um, and how they are vulnerable to stressors in the healthcare environment. I will only briefly mention the impact of illness on children's uh, development and how the ages of different children will impact how they cope. And then we'll talk about these child friendly interventions, which is communicating appropriately with children, play and therapeutic activities, psychological preparation, coping, the providing procedural support and pain management, and parent and family centered care. And how we as students um, in the university can get involved in some of this programming. And then as uh, Dr. Sujata mentioned, we will um, break into the, the three groups and um, we'll take it from there. We'll do a little bit of SWOT analysis. They're looking at um, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats in being able to do some of this kind of work. And we're talking about small, um, you know, throwing, casting a stone and there's a ripple effect and we never know where the ripples will go. So we're, um, you know, think, think small, act big, um, act, think big, it'll eventually lead to bigger thoughts. So as you listen to my presentation, please think about this as we get into our breakout sessions for our academic uh, participants, thinking about do we have the opportunity to develop a child life course in a regular curriculum as an elective or summer intensive or as a virtual class? Um, can we invite other faculty to speak until we develop our own indigenous sustainability to teach these courses? Training of trainers, which can easily be organized in India, traveling on faculty exchange programs like Fulbright programs to learn more about child life, student field placements and internships in pediatric settings, and definitely needing more indigenous research. So keep this in mind as you listen to my presentation. For students in the audience, think about the, the field placements that you have in your programs. Where are they in um, early childhood centers, in NGOs? Can we think about pediatric centers? Um, groups like Can Kids, Kids Can. Um, so we'll talk about some of that. Volunteering in hospitals um, with groups like Operation Smile. They're very eager for human development uh, kind of volunteers. Of course, we are mindful of COVID guidelines because COVID has happened and that changes a little bit um, in our healthcare uh, inter interactions with children in healthcare settings. However, we're doing a think tank, so we're being very futuristic thinking, okay? El taking elective courses, exploring internships locally and overseas, as well as for graduate students thinking about indigenous research. For administration, um, for those who are in other kinds of administrative roles, we need to identify hospitals who are willing to work with child life specialists. We need to identify funding sources, uh, companies, social responsibilities, NGOs, government, private, local, overseas for salaries and program development, creating awareness among, among healthcare providers about the whole importance of interdisciplinary care as well as utilizing communication and media technology to create awareness of the psychosocial needs of children and families in healthcare, not only for professionals, but also for parents. Can we write in parent magazines, you know, those kinds of things. So these are things that I'm just giving you sort of a heads up um, ahead of time that these are some of the things that can come up in our think tank. So Quickly, the, everybody is aware of the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, which highlights the duty to provide adequate health care for children and to ensure that when they are receiving any care, that they are protected from harmful practices and discrimination. So 
when we come to think about well, what can be harmful practices for children when they are in hospitals? Are they emotionally safe? The emotional safety, the psychological safety of children is highly in question in healthcare settings. So we need to be mindful of that. Um, so again, um, there are several rights of the child, one of which is respecting the views of the child. This is a core principle. And do we really always listen to what the child is saying to us? So be thinking about that. So I won't, I'm just introducing these to you in the interest of time. I'm just going to go through some of the key points. But let me point out this one. I have the right to be viewed first as a child and then as a patient. So even just in the language we use, we don't say things like cancer child or autistic child. It's child with cancer, child with autism, right? Put the child before the disease or the developmental condition. Um, so again, be mindful of the language we use as human development professions. Right to be treated as an individual with, uh, with our own abilities, culture and language, which we cannot stress the importance of that in India. We have so many different regional languages and culture and things are done differently. So we need to be mindful of that. I have the right to be afraid and to cry when I feel hurt. So children communicate through crying. Often we as adults get more disturbed when a child cries, especially young children. And it's also OK for older children to cry. We don't have to tell them, you know, be a big boy, be a big girl. I mean, it's tears are cathartic and we need to learn to accept them for what they are. Um, I have a right to be safe in an environment that is unfamiliar to me. So clearly the hospital environment with all the machines and sounds and smells and people running around and the sense of urgency around them is definitely clearly a very unfamiliar environment to children. So we need to make sure that they are feeling safe, which is why we have to explain things to them, not separate them from parents, listen to their views, reassure them as much as possible, uh, which is the next one, right? To ask questions and receive answers and to be cared for people who they want near them. Number 10, I have the right to play and learn even if I'm receiving care. This is very important. Often we have the misconception that, that we don't need to introduce play to children when they're in the hospital. They need to rest. You know what? The children will know when their body is tired and they're not able to play. But to deny them the opportunity to play is, is not a good um, action step. So we need to provide that sense of normalcy. For children, I, uh, there's a nice ana analogy I want to give quickly about play, which is, um, so imagine you're in a foreign country and you absolutely don't speak the language at all. So everything is unfamiliar, you, the food, the people, the language, you don't understand anything. And suddenly if you meet someone who can speak your language, you're going to be so relieved, heave a sigh of relief. Play in hospitals does the same thing for children. It's Wow, I recognize this. I recognize toys. I recognize coloring books. I recognize crayons. So giving them that opportunity provides a sense of normalcy, which is very important to introduce for children in hospitals. So please kind of keep that in mind that India has ratified to the UNCRC and therefore the government, the non-government bodies, us as private citizens, colleges, universities, we all, it's our duty to uphold the rights of children. So it's one great advocacy tool for you all and for me and for all of us if we are trying to sell a child life program in a new setting to say, you know, this will help us meet the rights of children according to the UNCRC. Here are some pictures of children who have cancer and you can see that they're just getting, exploring toys and playing in, in their bed. So advocacy within the hospital is very important. We as human development professionals understand development and it's our duty to advocate to healthcare professionals and hospital administrators to effect change of unnecessary rules that might be impacting the child and family's sense of autonomy, sense of independence, their dignity, their self-worth, 
So it's very important that we offer that. So what is child life? It's in very brief one line, helping patients and families understand and manage stress caused by illness or injury and any healthcare encounters. So we're helping manage that stress. So as human development professionals, we know that human development is shaped by a dynamic that is a continuous interaction between biology and experience. So it's who we are as, a, as the human body and what experiences we have. And we know it's a balancing act, as you can see here, with the sources of vulnerability that put us as risk and sources of resilience that are buffers and empower us. And so we know that when we provide effective interventions, then the risk goes, reduces and the protection increases, and then we, the children will have more adaptive outcomes. So for children in hospitals, if they are um, facing hospital surgery, any medical procedure, some of the main concerns are fear of separation from parents. Will we be separated from parents? Now, in our Indian culture, yes, families, we have more family members at the child's bedside. But it's when it's not about whether they're going to room in, in the hospital or not. It's about when they're being taken to procedures, to the procedure room, are they being separated? When is separation inevitable? And when can it be prevented? The unfamiliar surroundings, the sounds, the smell, the people, um, that is distressful. Fear of not knowing what is ahead. This is very important. We often erroneously think that we don't need to tell children what is going to happen because if we tell them, then they're going to worry. It's the opposite is true because children have imagination. Now, if you just even turn on the TV nowadays, there's so much news on Corona and it's stressful to us even as adults to see the ambulance ambulances blaring, removal of um, patients who have died, the you know all the the equipment in the hospitals and the crowded spaces. You think if children see this that they are not going to start imagining things. Even before Corona, if children watched movies and videos with families, they heard family members talk about illness, and they're going to be impacted. So rather than them imagining all kinds of crazy scenarios, it's better to tell them what is the truth and what is to be expected in a developmentally appropriate manner. Okay, And also knowing each child's coping style, which is part of our assessment. Illness, injuries brings pain and discomfort from the diagnosis itself and often also from the procedures. So uh, procedures can be painful operations when they have to make an incision, put back the chest bone or whatever part they're operating. That's going to be painful. Children worry about pain. Children worry about needles. Children worry about losing control, invasion of privacy, fear of bodily mutilation, and the list goes on. And these are the kinds of things we want to address. Children have different temperaments. It's a very important element of how a child copes with anything in life. Uh, it's an important aspect of how each of us copes with anything in our lives. Uh, but you might see different behaviors. You might see children who kick, bite, fight. You might see children with passive responses and you might see children with regressive responses. So child life uses play and other forms of communication to apply an understanding of normal growth and development to respond to each patient in an appropriate manner to enhance their ability to cope while minimizing their stress. Child life specialists provide emotional support, therapeutic play, prepare children for medical procedures, enhance the hospital environment for normalization, and definitely advocate for the parents' needs. So four Ps of the child life role, play and normalization, psychological preparation for procedures. So teaching them about whether it's tonsils or um, having an X-ray or any, any procedure, you name it, and also teaching them about their diagnosis in an age appropriate way. Parent and family support and empowerment, because if the parents are anxious, the children are going to be anxious. We know about the contagion effect. And pain is another very big concern of children in hospitals. So pain management using non-pharmacological 
uh, techniques is very important part of our role. We have other roles as well, but for this, let me just, uh, for the brief introduction, let me just tell you these four. Research has also shown that with the provision of child life services or psychosocial services, children face less emotional distress. So even early research in the six, 1960s and 70s showed that if after a child received developmentally appropriate care and play in hospitals, they had less nightmares. They were, at, when they got discharged to home, they slept better, less clingy behaviors to parents. So there is this post hospital adjustment inventories. And those could be ideas for research that we need to do more indigenous research in India on some of this. Um, more effective coping during medical procedures, so they were more adhering to what the doctors wanted instead of fighting and kicking. They were more likely to stay still, let the procedure happen more smoothly. Better understanding, even quicker recovery and earlier discharge, even the physiological indicators, blood pressure, uh, peeing after surgery, those indicators even improved. The work environment became more positive uh, because everyone is um, less stressed and more engaged. And for the hospitals, it creates a better public relations um, inter, um, uh, sort of an image. How does the child especially spend the day in the hospital? What do we do? In the morning, we get a nursing report from the unit on the unit where we're working, know which children we have, what, what is their diagnosis, what are they going to experience. Then we go around and say hello to all the patients. Um, many child life programs have a playroom, so there might be fixed uh, hour of play for group play. Again, a little change there for COVID. And then based on knowing which children are having which procedures, we would uh, teach them one-on-one uh, -on -one about their procedures, go into the procedure room to support them during the, um, the procedure so that they can manage their pain more effectively. Very much part of team meetings with the doctors and nurses, we document in the medical record, and we always work with volunteers and community members. Um, so again, the mission, vision, values, we work with all the way from babies through young adults and the uh, family members. So we also work with adults play, we provide play, therapeutic relations. The child needs to know the child life specialist and have trust in them that we will do what is best for them. So those relationships are very important. Communication, not only directly with the child, but we also role model to nurses and doctors. What, does, what are appropriate ways of communicating information to children? We definitely have theoretical foundations of practice, professional collaboration. We cannot be a child life specialist in a bubble. We work with doctors and nurses and we have professional standards and there is research and evidence. So for the students in the audience or the teachers also, what what do child life specialists need to study? Um, so you can have a minimum of a bachelor's degree in any of these child development, human development, counseling, education, psychology, preferably the first two. A master's degree is preferred for certain jobs. Uh, 600 hours of internship under a certified child life specialist with so certain work experience and then a certification exam. So this is if you want to practice in the US or Canada. This is not if you want to practice in India, right? Like if you want to do work in India, things can be a little different. But regardless, we want everyone to understand child and human development, play, family systems, we do discuss death and dying because sometimes children unfortunately do die, but there's also loss and grief from the normalcy. So if a child was um, typical, uh, typically developing child, no illness, got into a bad uh, car accident and ended up needing both the legs being amputated. So suddenly here's a healthy child, seven year old doing normal things and now doesn't have two legs. So there is, they're alive, but there is such a sense of grief and loss from the loss of the limb. And how do we help them, right? So uh, we do have death and dying and grief and loss. Research, I wrote death and dying twice. And then a CCLS dot course. Child life people, we also need to understand anatomy, physiology, and medical terminology. Uh, we, we need to understand cultural competency because we are going to meet with all kinds of 
children and families from all religions, commun uh, so SES, socioeconomic strata, abilities, age, and we need to be able to work with everyone respectfully. And then um, children with special needs, other HDFS courses are good. I'm looking at the clock. I think I have about five or ten more minutes, Jata. Okay, so I won't go into five the minutes. Head. five minutes. Okay, so we do need to know our theories. So you all know we have Piaget and Vygotsky and attachment theory and social learning theory. We draw upon all of these theories. Uh, we have to understand psychosocial, psychological stress and coping. Stress is when someone feels threatened that something bad is going to happen to them, whether it is real or imagined. And coping is what you do to overcome that threat. Quickly, I want to mention that um, I've said this in the beginning that children of different ages, their development in all different domains will be impacted with the kind of illness they have. So whether it's cancer or heart defects or seizures or whatever, it's going to impact their development. And the age of the child will impact how they cope. So it's a bi-directional influence. Again, this could be a whole you know, three hour talk just on the development and how children of different ages cope and how illness can impact development in a different way. We assess the vulnerability to stress. So when we are meeting with a child and family, we have to wonder how are they going to cope? And we look at a composite dynamic interaction between child, family, and healthcare variables. So who is the child? What is their temperament? How old are they? Have they been in hospitals before? Did they have a previous negative experience? Healthcare variables, what is their diagnosis? Is it cancer? Is it a brain disorder? Is it an accident? What is it? Are they going to have painful procedures? Have they had bad experiences before? Who is in their family? Are the parents literate? Are they come? Do they have to travel like three, four hours to come to the hospital? What are these stressors? Do they have family members? So all of that will create a composite picture of the stress vulnerability. Um, communication, we sent you an article, but always remember the nonverbal communication is more, communicates more than words. So again, when we work with any children, be mindful that we have to listen, see their face, look at their body language, and assess how they're coping. So I mentioned about play before. So children in hospitals play. Medical play is using dolls or stuffed animals, soft toys to teach children about their, the kind of medical procedures that they would have and allow them to practice that. Therapeutic art. Here's a drawing of a child who's, she's a, brother, she's a sister and her baby brother was going to have heart surgery and she drew this. And she, this is what she thought was happening, that the doctors were going to take out the heart from the baby's body and, you know, operate on it with this big, for, uh, take it out with this big forceps and then, you know, remove the heart. Now, this is a seven-year-old's imagination. And none of this was happening, but through her art, we could communicate and mis clarify her misconceptions. So psychological preparation is communicating accurate information ahead of time understanding what the child knows, see what they know about the surgery, if the procedure that is happening and teach them about it. Um, most of the times children are worried about, will it hurt? Um, so it's very important to uh, teach them about all the sensations that they would experience, why they're doing the procedure. And after you finish the teaching, we can practice some, okay, when they're putting the needle in, taking deep breaths or looking at a book or something like that. We can practice that and then ask them to see if they understood what we said. Um, so we can go back to this and we don't have to have expensive things like this is a cardboard box from which they were able to create a CT scan or an MRI machine, right? So lots of different uh, ways to uh, do to work with children and it's our own creativity that that matters. Um, so children often don't have choices in hospitals. How can we give choices when we're drawing or coloring with them? Do you want a red crayon or a pink crayon? You know, make a big deal of, and they can choose a red or a blue or a pink crayon. And it's like, oh wow, you chose a blue crayon, you know? 
And it's like, wait, I still have some sense of choice and autonomy. Pain is an important thing. We probably won't go into the details of it now. But again, there are lots of pain management, psychosocial techniques. In the end, it's always important to remind the child that pain is temporary. It will go away and give them some uh, techniques to uh, process the pain. And I, one thing we need to know is that we are working with children in the hospitals, but we have to keep in mind that these children are going home. They're going to their school, they're going to their village, they're going to their community and think about those long term interventions. And finally, I want to talk about the parents. We have to, as Sharla people, work with parents and understand that they're feeling guilty might be. They might have fears and misconceptions. They worry about the long term outcomes. Uh, they worry about uh, what did they do wrong? Could they have prevented the, the problem that their child has? So there's a lot of feelings that parents go through. They may have financial stressors, stresses of taking care of the other children in the home. So there's a lot that's going on with them. And we need to work with them consciously with dignity and uh, share information without using too much jargon. Of course, get, you know, doctor work. We work with doctors and nurse, uh, nurses and they need to know our role so that they don't feel that we are overstepping um, their role. So it's a very collaborative, intentional process. Um, and then the whole idea of volunteering. We have all of these resources that I will talk about. Um, Operation Smile, uh, we'll talk about if someone gets interested in volunteering, who to contact. And now we'll break into our think tank. So. Um, I went through this really fast. Now with our uh, three groups, we will have about 20, 30 minutes to talk among each other about, you know, what can we do? These are, I, I talk fast and share a lot of ideas. So, you know, what are some options? So the think tank for students, the administ um, so I'm going to work with the uh, academic and administrative group and some students. And Parminder and Deepa are going to work with the student groups as well. So, um, Sujata, um, are we ready to break out? And yes, uh, uh, do you need so to say something before we break out? Yes, uh, Lingeshri will take over. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Preeti Desai, ma'am, for that sure. uh, enlightening talk on child life services. Um, there will be three breakout rooms. Just be wherever you are, your participants. So we will be moving you to the different rooms. So meanwhile, we would love to show you a few uh, videos on child life services. Oh, I need to unshare, I think. No problem, ma'am. I think it will work. One second. Where, where is my? Okay, I want shared. Yes. Okay. So this is the. <laughs> Thank you. 
There is no one doing clear. I hold hope in my hands right here in my hands. As well as other districts. And I will never give up on her. It gives us because love to a job which we would not have had to be for my baby to grow and be strong. The way patient recruitment camps work is and be we have happy. a behavior team here. He would normally work with the So I try my best to work. The reason we use local organizations See. is because people in that area know them and so care for her. They trap you and build trust with the patient. I try my best. Excuse me, uh, Lingeshwari, I think there are two videos. Uh, there's another video going on in the background. Yes, Mama. No, Mariana. We just want this one. Yeah. yeah. Now, ma'am. Yes. Yeah, it's better. Both cutters. See, but cutters. See, cutters. Little. Little cutters. Little. Tar. Mani school life. Cutters. The. Sabte. Ke. Bado. Problem. Ho. Even. Atta. Jodi. Pallet. Cutters. Ke. Karo. Ma. Cutters. See. Pallet. Ta. Cutters. Ke. Le. Cutters. Ke. Thi. Ki. Oshmi. De. Hote. Pare. Koon. Time. Me. Cutters. Operation. Ta. Shorty. Corona. Dorkar. See. Gulo. Boi. Ye. Buji. Anta. সামনে আমাদের পাশে বাড়ির রাজা কাকা বলে একটা ডাক্তার আছে রামপুরাটের উনি উনি আমাদেরকে যোগাযোগটা বলে দিয়েছে কি মুরার এই কালকে ক্যাম্প হবে তোমরা এসো তোমার ছেলেকে নিয়ে ওখানে ওরা কার্ড করে দিবে দিয়ে ওখানে ওরা দুর্গাপুর নিয়ে যাবে দিয়ে তোমার ছেলে ভালো হয়ে যাবে জেনে ভালো লাগছে কি অত দূর হলেও ওদের অপারেশনটা হলে পরে তো আমার ছেলেটা ভালো হয়ে যাবে জানা সত্ত্বে ভালো লাগছে these children need a comprehensive care because time to time the patient needs follow up needs necessary surgical intervention dental intervention speech pathologist intervention everything so that is why uh, other than working as an isolated surgeon it is always better to work in a team when i do cleft work i feel this is it i i made for this but these people will not have that facility unless it is been provided at a very minimal cost or no cost at all that's why a center is needed because just a surgery won't help them tomader sajjote amar chhele bhalo hoyeche ami etai mane ami khub khushi tomader mane ami mane amar moton khushi ar keu nei je mane shobai bhalo thako the durgapur cleft center advances safe surgery in india primarily because of its geographical location there are very few organizations who are trying to do that we are increasing access Lingeshwari, we can stop and do our breakouts now. I think uh, it. We are in the breakout breakout rooms actually. Okay, yes, so I'm seeing. So that is I'm why this thing is happening. So I, I should see Parminder, right? Yeah, Parminder is still here. I can still see her. I, she I just, should be in her own group. Yeah, yeah. Parminder, adjust your camera. Yeah, yeah Parminder is still here. <laughs> Sujata, are we in our groups? Hello. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. We are. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm still seeing one of the 
group yes, leaders. Yes, yes. Uh, 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 one sec. Actually, the name was Harshvardhan, so that's why we couldn't uh, actually. So now we are doing it. So we okay. move her to the. Okay. So we got a little confused. Yeah. Oh, just do sorry. It. <laughs> sorry about it, ma'am. So then tell me no, no, when no, I can start. No, no, that's fine. Yeah. I understand. Okay. Preeti, is that okay? Okay, I can. I'm oh, here, can but but Parminder is still here. She yeah. needs to be yeah, in her yeah. own group so that the, uh, she can lead her group. <laughs> yeah, yeah. One second. Just but am I in the right group? Then I can start talking while you yes, try you to are get. Yes, you in the right group. Okay. So there are five uh, participants in your group. How many? Thirty-five. Thirty-five are there. Okay. Sounds great. Sounds great. Thank you. Okay. So, um, if the participants, if you are able to turn on your cameras, that would be fine. We're in a smaller group, so you're. I'm inviting you to turn on your cameras if you have the capacity to do that. You turn on your video or your camera if you are able to. That would be nice. OK, that's great. Awesome. And we need to get Parminda to her group. <laughs> OK, yes. so where is everyone? Um, I know that we have participants from many different parts of India, so welcome. Um, so this is this is that uh, for in this group, we should probably have graduate students. We should have uh, professors and faculty members. We should have any other members from the community that had signed up out of interest in this topic. And uh, so we're, we're going to have this this conversation. So uh, I'm going to talk less. You all are going to talk more. So we want to follow the SWOT analysis in, in terms of just kind of having a discussion on um, what from based on what you heard. What do you think are our strengths already? What is what is it that we are doing already that we know uh, already in our education system um, that can be facilitative of child life, uh, promoting child life in India? Where do we need to have more inputs? Where are weaknesses? What are opportunities and how can we? I need um, to interrupt you for a moment. Yes. I think I'm uh, Parminder. Can you please send me your phone number? So uh, if you can give me your phone number in the chat box or maybe if you can tell me now. Yes. Nine eight nine eight. One second. Nine eight nine eight. Four two five. Four. Two five. Two five. Seven two five. Seven two five. I, okay, I'll connect you with this. Okay, so uh, I'm sorry, Preeti. You can carry on. That's okay. Thank you. And then you can let Swati know to start her group if if needed. Okay. And Parminder, adjust your camera because we can only see half your face. I think. Okay, great. Now we have everyone here. So, um, who, who would like to talk about system ideas? What what is it that Based on what you heard, what is it that excites you that this might be a, a possibility in your uh, in your city, in your hometown, in your university, in 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 your community? Please share with me. Please unmute so we can hear you when you're talking. And this is an informal group, so don't be shy. Do we have any uh, faculty members in the room in this in the discussion room? That are teachers in the university. Shristi, um, can you unmute yourself? OK, 
Um, yes, ma'am. All right. So uh, tell us a little bit about where are you a student and, um, you know, what do you think about child life based on what you heard? And um, do you think wherever you are placed, there is an opportunity to engage either as a, you know, um, in different capacities in the in, in the in the healthcare environment. Oh, uh, like um, right now I'm in my hometown, so there's no much uh, like scope for uh, child life here because uh, I have inquired uh, that whether because uh, like all this while it was like three times I just wanted to use that and uh, wanted to. Uh, maybe in turn or learn with a, a pediatric neurologist and mm -hmm. I just found out that there's just one center uh, like one uh, uh, like for the disabled kids and all of that there's just one center for that in my locality and there is almost like 15 to 20 kids and most of them they say that the child is with autism but there are many more like down syndrome and ADHD and all of that mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so like there's a dire need of uh, child life specialties, specialists in my area. Along with that, we really need to work on like, so that's why I'm just shifting. Like I have, uh, I, I went to Bangalore for that because I really don't have so much scope in my area. Uh, so I thought maybe like, uh, that's what I told the Sajata ma'am during my introduction that uh, I, that's why I want to work uh, there for some time, gain some experience and then come back and work here maybe. And where is, where is, where are you from? Like, where is your locality? You said. Uh, I'm from West Bengal. Uh, okay. The main locality is Darjeeling. Okay. So there are, um, if you are interested in, so there will be, it's, it's beautiful, number one, <laughs> place I want to visit sometime. Um, <laughs> but um, but also there will be hospitals and pediatricians. Of, and it may not be a whole hospital, but sometimes there's just a pediatric ward within yes. a hospital. Yes, and um, I know that back in the day when I began learning, it was, um, you know, I, I started in a pediatric ward in Baroda and we just went, you know, to provide play for children. We weren't doing all this uh, full scope of child life services. So, you know, if the interest is there, then, you know, we can make make the intent. So thank you for sharing that. Thank you so I much. There's one sharing. more thing I want to share because uh, like I have, uh, like I'm basically an optometrist. My graduation is, uh, I did my grad in uh, optometry. So I was working at Nara Netralia in the pediatric ward itself. So okay, wonderful. There, yes, ma'am. So actually that's when it struck me that I have seen so many people, I mean, so many kids with so many disorders. Uh, we usually deal with neurooptometry that deals with like cortical visual impairment. Mm -hmm. I guess you must have heard about it. So sometimes yes. uh, because of cortical visual impairment, the child are misdiagnosed and like they are sent to uh, different autistics or uh, some other centers. So because of that, I felt like uh, human development might help in changing the scenario that the misdiagnosis of children uh, and all of that. So like it really interests me to hear you, ma'am. Like it's really. No, no, no. It's just the, please make sure you stay in touch with me because I'm both my parents are eye doctors so i i'm a totally an ophthalmic person so i and i'm actually Thank currently you. writing a paper i'm doing a review paper on how children cope just with eye eye treatments that's a paper i'm writing right now from the psychosocial perspective so i i'm just so thrilled to hear about your um, so i've heard of of course nara and netrale and um, you know so definitely uh, take my email from Sujata ma'am and uh, send me an email so we can talk more. I would certainly, uh, you know, there's definitely a lot that children yes, go through with eye problems. So thank yes, you so much for sharing that. Thank you. Um, thank you. So thank you. Um, other participants in the room, anything that stood out for you that you think, you know, this, this might work? We have... Uh, Dr. Sangeeta Pandey, I don't know where, where you are. No, I'm very much here, but uh, I, it, it's very interesting oh. to hear. This is something new for me. So I'm, sure. enjoying, I'm enjoying this communication. Thank you. That's wonderful. Where are you, Dr. Pandey? I'm in Mount Carmel College, but I'm oh, from you are the right here. Background. Okay, okay. 
ஒன்ட் <laughs> 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 because uh, mm-hmm. i have not heard uh, it from the one of the human development uh, specialist correct so it's a, it's a no, pleasure it's a very very in depth field and as and so it sounds like your background is in nutrition and yes. so clearly such a great um, overlap between human development and nutrition it's just underlying um, exactly yeah potential for great collaboration so thank you for yes. sharing yes I'm just yeah. reading out uh, thank you so much who thank else you. would like to share like, based on what you heard did 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 something inspire you for okay maybe i can do something with you know like uh, shushti got excited about of technology and uh, children with eye problems or you know with children in darjeeling with the i uh, center did other uh, people come think about oh, maybe we could do this who else do we have i might have to start taking names otherwise is <laughs> uh, nimra muskan are you here aba manisha or sitakshi thakur zara and so shy Um so Jada do you know who else in our group is a faculty member from other other places I just let you know one minute okay Dr Swaruparani are you here Okay so let's talk but since everyone is a little quiet let me talk a little um what if um the potential to teach a course now, now with um the internet being um you know so readily available um what would would the students in the room be interested if there was a course added in in the curriculum that is a full course like with textbooks and or reading materials and assignments and exams and quizzes to understand more details about our child life would that be something of interest um to the students in the room um could you share your thoughts like why or why not and please don't be shy we're just a small group of people chatting for ideas Janvi what do you think Doctor I want to share something that I was also admitted in hospital twice and uh, uh, Janvi could you adjust your camera a little bit sorry so we can see your face a little more okay go ahead now now please share I was admitted in hospital twice and I had fever Uh, when you were talking about that uh, children go through this phase they feel lonely and on the other side uh, uh, what their parents feel so uh, listening to you i was feeling that i have also same uh, as a as a child i also experienced the same with me uh, so i think uh, i would love to uh, know more about this topic or more about this field because i have also gone through this yeah no thank you for uh, being um, you know honest in sharing that your own personal experience because often often my own students they might be you know cancer survivors or other other uh, disease survivors themselves any 
hospital experiences for various reasons. Our human body is so complex, numerous things can and take us in the hospital. And um, often when they have that personal experience, they have that sensitivity of how they felt. And, and then in turn, they want to help other children in, in that setting. So in Shushi's case, she worked in that environment. In your case, you experienced it personally. And so there are different things that motivate us to want to make a difference for other people. So um, certainly, um, Dr. Sujata, we were just talking about the idea that what if um, you know in this day and age with um, internet and technology the potential for creating um, an online course um, through either MSU of Baroda which is where my alma mater is MC Mount Camel College because you are a supportive person as I, I don't know if within your curriculum you have the potential for elective courses because I know clearly this is not for everyone. This this is a subject not everyone will be for for many people. It's just good to know it's out there, but there'll be a you know select people who may be interested. So the course couldn't be you know mandatory and required for everyone. But as an elective, um, if there is there is there a potential to incorporate that in a syllabus somewhere? Is it potential? Is there the potential to invite students from? You know, different university campuses if they are interested, or do they have to be enrolled in Mount Carmel or MS University of Baroda or something like that? Um, I know last time when we did the conference in February, we had someone from the Indira Gandhi Open University um, as a speaker, and um, you know, at that time I had thought this would be good to have as an online course. But parallelly, we have to develop the the marketplace for people to be able to be employed, right? Um, I know for you all in Bangalore, Manipal Hospital has a, a program through Brinka Foundation that they're potentially hiring people, but they only hire, I think, with children with cancer. I don't know that they have increased it to other um, children with other diagnoses. So Sujata, tell us a little bit, what do you think as a you know, head of the department and uh, with the new education policy and everything. Um, what what is the potential for, you know, just one three three credit course? Um, if yeah, you have, have it as, uh, see one is one. Now, when I was listening to your talk, it is it says somewhere around 440 hours or something is what a child should be doing to get certified uh -huh. is what I so having a credit course would not be possible because credit course here in India is only for two hours in a week, uh. which is I don't think is possible. Yes, as an elective, we can give it uh, as a as a course mm -hmm. because there we have around say six hours in a week where six or maybe seven hours in a week is what we can do. And this is how I think we can work on it. Okay. And it's a very good thing because we have the elect, elect, we can have an elective course in the third semester and the fourth semester. In the so, graduate students? In the postgraduate students. With the post okay. Even with okay. the graduate students, it is there, but then it is not. So either they are doing, say, BSc or BSc uh, Human Development Honors, then I think we can give it to them. But, right. but with a BSc, say nutrition, human development and chemistry, I don't think it is possible because yeah, there are three, three major subjects there. So right, I right. think we need to actually work on that. Right. But it's a good thing, I think. But yes, I would say a credit course as an introductory course is what we can have. Got it. I think that, yeah. So as a, just a, a two hours, you know, of yeah, workshop. No, I think, right. No, even, even that would be a good starting place. Sorry, and yeah. this the 600 hours what I was telling you that is an internship and that is only if someone wants to live and work and practice yes, in the US or Canada and all of that. Of course, an internship is a very good. Foundation to create the entry level competencies of child life in all those play psychological preparation, all of that. So that is very so I really feel I actually really feel that in India it is very important for the children for all the students to be working with the industry, with the hospital, with the you know yes. 
for it's it's in field because it's very important. Everybody has a theoretical knowledge. What I could see, there's work no, in the industry. Yeah, so that I think is very very important also. Yeah. So 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 that could be something that you know we can talk about at you know later on maybe as an elective um, in one of the semesters. And so elective means only students who may be interested are joining, right? They, yes. It's not for everyone. Um, yes. Somebody may be interested in early childhood. They may choose to go to a preschool oriented. If someone is interested in healthcare, they might choose this. So that could be that could be one thing um, that we can think about. And then we have graduate uh, postgraduate students. Do they write a thesis or a yes. dissertation? They write their dissertations. So, yeah. Yes. So again, that is very one way to get engaged in the healthcare sector. To to uh, we need more research uh, in how children and families cope with different healthcare experiences within um, you know the healthcare setup. So definitely you know uh, for um, a master's thesis or a doctoral thesis or a dissertation that might be something that we can think about in, in small ways. We're taking baby steps, right? So, um, you know, maybe having an elective course, doing a, a thesis, if someone is interested. So if someone likes to see, I don't know, are you a first year, second year, third year, fourth year? I don't know what year you are. PG but first year. PG first year. So like if you already have your contact with Nara and Netrale, you know, there might be a way for you to go back and write your thesis with and looking at children's coping with eye treatments, right? And so I'm just this is a, a thing. Well, I just want to it. add here that you know uh, now Department of Human Development Mount Carmel College is a recognized research center now. Wonderful. So, yeah. So you, if any student is interested, can actually register for that as well. So that's not a problem now. So I'm just thinking out ideas. So you have to for for students when you are thinking about your thesis or research, you, you have to know it has to be a combination of what you are interested in and what your teachers are able to uh, provide in terms of guidance and support. And there's so many different rules on that. So uh, but you know after doing this that that's one thing that you know uh, one can consider. So I think does anyone else have anything they'd like Rama, to Rama is also a faculty member. Okay. okay. Um, from where is where's Rama? Is she in Mount Camel College or? No, 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 no. She isn't. Where, is Rama there? I saw her before, but now. Where is she from? She's an assistant prof associate professor, Rama Devi, Dr. Rama Devi. And then we have Professor K. Anuradha. Are you there? Dr. Anuradha or Dr. Ramadevi, are you there? Swarupa Rani. Okay. Then you have Chumki Behra. Miss Chumki Behra is also a, a lecturer. A lecturer, okay. Yeah, but maybe they're um, maybe they have ah. logged out or something. Yeah. Madhu so Smita I, das, if she's mm -hmm. there. Madhu Smita Das, Banlata Pani Grehe. Priyanka Singla, if anybody is around. Okay. No. No. Okay. Never mind. So for the the students and whoever we have, let's do something because I think people may be a little hesitant to speak. Let's let's think about if everyone could add, put in the chat one just one thing that struck to you that was a new idea based on this discussion about child life or for some of you what might be one action just one action step that you might take toward um, promoting more psychologically emotional safe care for children in hospitals either by talking about it with others or exploring um, an opportunity somewhere. So I would love for you to just put your ideas in the chat box. If you don't mind. And again, this is very informal, so please, you know, don't worry about your spelling and grammar. Just it's just your ideas because I think tank is about 
idea. So what could what is one thing that excited you or one thing that you just learned that you didn't know before? So that would be helpful. So we'll take a few minutes to do that. Here's my chat. I think uh, Parminder is still here. Is she? Yeah. There's some problem with her, I think. I yeah. hope, but did uh, Sujata, can you drop out to Swati? Maybe she can take over. She's already that, there. She's already there. So hopefully she's taken over. <laughs> Parminder. Because then we'll come back in our, our group. Uh, we'll come back in the big group. So how can I? All right, let me start seeing some ideas. Are you seeing anything in the chat box? Yeah. Shreya is uh, Shreya writes create a poster, a write up, and share across social media to educate everyone. That's a great idea. That's Anyone great. else? Anybody else have an uh, an action step? Niharika writes, the concept of child life specialist in itself was new. I would like to explore the scope in my area. Niharika, what is your area? Like, where are you from? I'm from Uttarakhand. Uh, oh, wow. Where is Uttarakhand? Haldwani. Oh, oh, wow. Amazing. Um, so, again, you know, please look out for even the general hospital in your city, um, they will have pediatric ward and um, definitely a place to start. So um, wonderful. Thank you. And then Alicia. And then Alicia, yeah. Conducting virtual interactive sessions for deeper understanding of why child care services are important in hospitals. OK. So more more interaction, more uh, more virtual sessions. So this was more like an introduction. So, uh, you know, we can. Oh, I think she can go on the website and check the talk that you did in the conference. I think they can. Yeah, go that's and right. Go through and then, that. Um, Sujata, you can even share the one I, um, the one interview that I did just two days ago, and I sent you a link. Mm. Um, I'll share that. Yeah. You can share that too. Yeah. Great. Are there other other ideas? Uh, we have these. These are all great ideas. Anyone think about a research idea? Well, you read graduate. Here we go. Puja. Research to be conducted like benefits of child care services to set out examples. Yes. And I think um, there's a lot of different research ideas. So if there, again, seriously, if there are any uh, master's students that are looking for a research idea, um, if this topic interested you, um, definitely talk to Dr. Sujata, and then we can always put our heads together and come up with a game plan. So um, after today doesn't mean I'm not accessible to you all. <laughs> Maybe a little less, but I am <laughs> definitely. Angela? You have anything to ask? I'm an. Sharon. Okay. Then, um, uh -huh. then we can, um, Sujata, up, we can, I'm just looking at the clock. We can come back together as a big group. Okay. And then see what the other two groups um, had said. Um, Shristi, will you mind being the spokesperson for our group? 
and share in a couple of minutes to the big group what we discussed. Some ideas? Sure, ma'am. I'll pick okay. up whatever I All can. Right. Yeah, just what what just to to uh, just a few lines, okay? Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank Ravika, you. Just think about back in the main group. Are we back in the main group? Yeah. Just a sec. Okay. Ma, can we bring ready? them back now? Yes. Yes. yes please. Okay, ma'am. All right. Ma'am, the session is still going on. I think they are uh, still answering some questions. I feel. Okay. Mom, maybe five more minutes, mom. Um, yeah, we'll just let. Um, sure. Our group is the quiet group. I think the the there's undergraduate one more, uh, students uh, are talking a lot more. <laughs> Niti, there's one more uh, this thing. Uh, oh, Angela, I have okay. volunteered in KIM hospital using clowning to help children with cancer. Oh wow, Angela, tell us a little more. Where where KIM KIM is is it in? Uh, Pune or Mumbai or where? Bangalore. Oh, this is in Bangalore itself. Okay. So, can you tell us a little bit more about this? Uh, I was doing it as a part of address because I wanted to know the different types of fields in uh, what all is going on. Like I did, I, I have attended a lot of workshops on play therapy on uh, different like bibliotherapy as well. So oh, cloning yeah. is one of the therapies that was conducted there. And uh, there's, it's regular every Saturday, Sunday, they have sessions with the children. They have cloning sessions with the children. OK, that's that's wonderful. So did you get training in the clowning session as well? It was only one workshop and then we had one session with the children. That's it. OK, that's. That's really wonderful, and we do have, uh, you know, therapeutic clowning programs. So that's um, that's definitely good. Do they have uh, besides the clowning program? Do they have other play support and child life kind of um, interventions? I don't that, think you know, I didn't think we will do it. I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. And then Atia says play therapy in hospitals are definitely the best way to reduce their anxiety. I have volunteered in many. I can't read the rest. See more. Many NGOs where play therapy has been given suffering with different dis disorders. Adia, can you uh, tell us a little bit more? Where are you and tell us a little bit more about these NGOs? Thank you for sharing that. Hello, good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, Atia. I'm uh, sorry, I couldn't switch on my video because I've been traveling actually. But oh, okay. uh, during I am from Kolkata, and uh, during uh, my uh, you know graduation, I we did uh, you know our college had it allotted us a few NGOs where we had to go regularly and practice play therapies for children suffering from Down syndrome, autism. So like uh, you know it was the best way for the child. Basically, the child. Uh, they were not taken care of very properly, even in NGOs. It was very sad to see that. But then okay. uh, even for the less time, whatever time we've been there, we did try our level best, you know, to engage children in play therapies. And that really worked. Like the results were really uh, visible. So, uh, yeah. We've That's been wonderful. to Frame Dan. We've been to Umid. There are different foundations here, NGOs. Uh, where our college had a tie up with. So, yeah. And what's the name of your college, um, Atya? Uh, Ma'am, we were from JD Birla Institute, Kolkata. Okay. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. So, so that's that's good. Yeah. About two years ago, I did a whole day training in Kolkata for um, for child life through Operation Smile. So. Um, and we had reached out to your institute too, but somehow we couldn't connect. So um, that's wonderful to know. So doing this play therapy was part of your field work as part of this as being a student. Yes, ma'am. It was okay, wonderful. part of my field work. Wonderful. Yes, wonderful. So there's definitely um, a great example of what is already being done and you know what we can do like with the 
that came hospital here in Bangalore that Angela talked about and um, you know all of that. So those are great ideas. And how can we uh, fine tune and do more to give them a full scope of service? So we need uh, more and more people uh, interested and engaged and you know learn the full scope of our care that we can do. So thank you so much for sharing. Um, Savita, uh, I should so see much. you now. Um, where are you? Can you tell us a little bit more about what you got out of this session? And Sharon just shared sessions for children who are having cancer in school. It was an art and science. Sharon, can you tell us a little bit more? We can't hear you, Sharon. Are you muted? Good evening, ma'am. Yeah, good evening. Yeah. Yeah. Tell so, tell me more about. So my my name is Sharon, and I have I'm doing currently my master's in human development from Mount Carmel College. So yes. for my bachelor's, I did in human development. We had to take uh, activities uh, for children who were suffering from cancer. Okay. So. Yeah, so it was an entire class and we took sessions like on arts on like we showed them few art techniques to children. So they are suffering from cancer like there was various age groups and the children were divided into age groups and then we interacted with them. So we showed them different techniques of science and uh, how certain things happen, certain experiments were done with them and certain uh, classes on even on geographies, very few lessons. Right. It was just for a period of a uh, few hours, so for, just for two hours or so. It was very, it was very nice to see the children uh, do these sessions because uh, they get a break. Like we could even see children who were just coming out of a chemotherapy and they were here just to do the art because they were really very really enjoying it. It it was like a break for them from the hospital scenario. Come to, no, to that's this. wonderful. And did you do your bachelor's also in Mount Camel College? No, ma'am. I did it from Mumbai, from okay. College of Home Science, Nirmala Niketan. Nirmala, Nirmala Niketan? Yes, Nirmala Niketan. Oh, one, wonderful. So which hospital did you go to, to do your play sessions? No, ma'am. This, uh, this was a school. This was a cancer oh. school. School. So when children attended school, if, when they, if they had cancer? Yes, yes, exactly. Okay. It's also called as Takla Takli School here. Oh, so it's from Can Kids then. It's yes. Can Shala. Yes, Can Shala. Okay, that's wonderful. That's that's definitely part of Can Shala. And we are very connected. Parminder and I are very connected with Can Shala. So that's that's great to know. I'll have to tell one of their uh, le uh, leaders. That's wonderful. Thank you for sharing. Thank so, you. Wonderful, wonderful. All right, are we back in the big group? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So, Shatya, are we back in the big group? Yes, yes. yes uh, Savita, all of them have come back? Yeah, ma'am. Yeah, ma'am. All of them have come there back. There are only 53. There was uh, 69 before. Oh, ma'am, I think Look, some people may have left. Issues, they might, they might okay. have left. Perfect. Okay. Oh, that sounds great. Okay, so thank you, everyone, uh, for sharing in your individual groups. And um, so what I would like to do just really quickly, because I think we're running out of time. One, I hope this session was new and informative for all of you, but I hope that in each session we have one spokesperson who can please take two or three minutes each to share some of the ideas that you all brainstormed in your think tank. So, um, Shristi, do you want to go first, please? Shristi was in my group. Yeah, thank you, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, so in my group, we had uh, like a lot of uh, candidate participants and from that we had uh, like Preeti ma'am, Sushata ma'am and uh, Dr. Sangeeta ma'am. Uh, and we discussed about uh, like how the child life, uh, you know, how it can grow, like ma'am asked for some ideas uh, in which we can grow. So there were people like who said, uh, 
like i i told like you can spread it across social media and there were people who exp- uh, who like shared their experiences uh, what they faced while uh, they were doing their field work while they were uh, like they they were like uh, with their own uh, you know uh, the with their own uh, interest they went uh, to various uh, other organizations and they did uh, a lot of work like pay therapies and volunteering there was one person who did uh, volunteering with uh, the kim hospital in bangalore itself uh, then people came up with intensive research ideas uh, so that was uh, that was what we discussed and uh, priti ma'am uh, told us about some courses and that was like really really nice uh, so i guess sujata ma'am will uh, tell about uh, about that later on so it was really a good session thank you ma'am thank you thank you so much uh, shristi for paraphrase uh, just summarizing um, the some of the different ideas of clowning and play and art and in different parts we had uh, participants from haridwar and um, originally Uttra from mumbai Khan. and kolkata and it's just uh, fascinating to me that uh, we can all be together and uh, dr sujata and i talked about potentially uh, an intro to child life course you know things like that so thank you for summarizing Would someone from Deepa's group like to summarize what you discussed? Deepa, you're muted. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. um i think from my group uh, there was a, a girl called krupa and natasha i think one of those one of y'all can say what we talked about um so we so we started off by talking about what are some of the common challenges we face uh, if we were to opt for the profession of a child life specialist and uh, Deepa ma'am told us some of the things that she faced and she said that her biggest concern was having to deal with uh, death and loss and uh, she gave us a few tips on how she overcame it and um, uh, we spoke about that then we touched on uh, some of the possible courses that we could do and uh, i think one of the main things that we touched upon in our uh, session was about uh, how there's a lack of awareness of the importance of a child life specialist in uh, india and how uh, we need to work towards um, creating that awareness uh, and then we spoke about how uh, in in a hospital setting how some doctors may not agree to the whole idea of having a child life specialist and what would how what how would we handle that situation like if somebody were to ask us what is the difference between you and a child psychologist and how would we handle it and so we we came up with a discussion about how we would say that we are particularly trained to handle a situation like this like in terms of uh, play therapy and things like that but uh, you know a child psychologist probably wouldn't be able to deal with that because uh, like like we said we ha- we will be uh, learning about anatomy and we will be fami- familiarizing ourselves with the condition um that was what we spoke about yeah thank you great um thank you and where are you are you uh, where are you uh, located krupa where do you live oh uh, ma'am i'm natasha and i'm from bangalore oh, sorry, natasha sorry <laughs> you are right here in bangalore okay <laughs> i i know you okay okay um great deepa do you have anything to add for your group Uh, no i think um, um initially they were a little hesitant to talk but um, i think eventually the, most of them warmed up and uh, yeah mainly the the topics that she touched on were exactly what we talked wonderful and natasha so i know the the whole idea of resistance is very important um even even in well like deepa would have told you even in well established child life programs um we face that um, that the even uh, nurses will not call us uh, when they know that we can help and if they have to modify the way they interact with children um, it it just we do still face resistance so that's a very important question and the idea of what is the difference between a child psychologist and a child life specialist right and i'm glad you said that because i think if we want to grow this kind of service in india i think we may not need to be hung up on the name child life 
Um, and I know here we use the word play therapy very differently than play therapy in the US or Canada because the certification is very different. So what we do is more therapeutic play rather than play therapy per se, because play therapy has its own set of rules and licenses. So just providing play to children in hospitals or in a school setup and art and all is more therapeutic play rather than play therapy. So there are those technical nuances to words. And, you know, for me, I, I, I'm i not so hung up on what we call ourselves in India and what our eventual credentialing would be and things like that. Um, it's the idea that we give these services to children. So I was very excited, especially in my group when we were talking about, you know, the clowning and the art in Ken Shala and things like that. So there are little um, interventions going on and how can we systemata systematically grow this? And like you rightly said, Natasha, just that awareness that we need a professional like this to work in pediatric settings. I think that that is the key. So uh, we need to work on that. Um, so uh, a challenge for all of us. Um, so thank you so much for that summary. And um, I'm looking at the clock, so make sure uh, Perminder's group um, we have a spokesperson from your group, Parminder. Yes, uh, uh, we didn't decide it at the end because I joined in late the group three, but there was one student who wanted to uh, from UP. So okay. can you please share? Yeah, just one line that we discussed. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> yeah, thank you. Ma'am, I'm Parul Kalia. I've done my PhD from Human Development and Family Studies from Punjab Agriculture University, Ludhiana. So I was discussing about like I have attended the conference before in Feb. So uh, I was just trying um, to means how I can go for this if I want to pursue something in child life services. So we discuss about how to uh, uh, spread awareness like to uh, like Paminder ma'am said. And to visit uh, in a local hospital and discuss them uh, about the child life services and what kind of services are there for children who are in hospitals uh, settings. So we were discussing about that, uh, how to take uh, baby steps uh, and like for a kind of uh, spreading awareness. Uh, we were discussing about that. Yes. Okay, great. Parul, where are you working now? You said you finished your PhD, right? Yeah, I have done. I have completed PhD in April. Uh, okay. Nowadays, I'm just waiting for results for interview, which I have given. And you'll be looking to uh, work in a university setup or um, in an NGO or hospital um, or whichever I got means I am not uh, okay. set any rules for me. I am not like that. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, so no, there, there is a, you know, just a really good opportunity. You said you are in Ludhiana, right? Yes, no, I was. Right now I'm uh, at my hometown, Uttar Pradesh, near Lucknow. Near Lucknow, okay. Yes. Yeah. And so oh, Lucknow would be a place, a potential place for you to get engaged with uh, opportunities? Yes, ma'am. I'm yeah, open so, for options. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, so certainly, um, you know, big city, many hospitals, general hospitals, wards, there's a lot of opportunity to to develop a proposal if you uh, target a, a hospital somewhere where you may uh, want to reach out. Um, certainly, um, feel free to get hold of uh, Dr. Sujata or myself. Um, we've I've written proposals, even the hospital in Manipal Hospital, the Child life program that started there at that time. I'm not involved with it now, but at the time it was very much part of um, writing the proposal and meeting the administrators and kind of going through the uh, needs assessment phase with them in in where to establish the program. And then um, I've done that with the Kashiwa Hospital in Vadodara, along with the um, uh, the university support, the Maharaja Sahajira University support. Parminder has been involved there. So we have, uh, you know, I have sample, uh, what do you call it, proposals that I'd be glad to share with you if this is something that you're serious, serious about. And since you finished your PhD, there's always opportunities for Fulbright 
uh, scholarships um, is to go to um, the US has Fulbright. There are, I'm sure other countries have other scholarships where you can come and uh, learn if this is something that truly interests you. Come in, uh, spend three months or six months in a university setup where they can uh, make sure you are put in hospital setups to learn about, um, you know, step by step how you can provide child life services in, in a new setup in, in, in your context. So again, you know, at my university, I will tell you, uh, East Carolina University is always welcoming um, international participants. So again, if that is something of your interest, um, you know, to spend three months, we have faculty exchange programs, um, and sometimes we even have that for non PhDs. Um, but there's definitely that faculty exchange possibility, even if it is not a Fulbright. So, you know, please reach out. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But if you don't reach out, then we don't know. Uh, we can't go anywhere if we don't reach out. So, um, you know, we can always explore different options like that. And I firmly believe what like Mother Teresa does. It's like, you know, we are not, I'm going to paraphrase, but it's not like everyone is going to do one big great Taraka job. You know, it's, it's these little things that we do um, that will start to accumulate and um, you know, the ripple effect of what we start will go far and impact children and families in different places. And we need to create a network of like minded individuals so that, um, you know, we can come together to to create a force um, to, sure. to make this change through whether it is through academia and courses or whether experiences like Shristi's uh, experience that she mentioned with the Narayan Netralay or um, the experience with clowning, you know, just little things like that that we can we can bring together. So um, I think um, this has been a great time to have like minded people in the same space. So um, Sujata, thank you so much for making that possible. Um, if there are any last thoughts, I'm always mindful of time and I appreciate everyone being here. Um, if anyone has any last questions or thoughts, that we can um, discuss. Please let us know or Sujata, how can people if you have thoughts later on, maybe you can write them in your. Um, uh, the evaluation um, and you know we would be happy to review that as well, but I'm available uh, Parminder and Deepa. Deepa is a certified child life specialist and she lives here in Pune. Um, Parminder lives in Varodra. I'm here in India at least two or three months every year. Dr. Sujata knows how to get hold of me as well. So, you know, we have a we have a great network. Um, and so we need to reach out to each other. Sometimes we may be slow in because we have so many things we're doing, but we're there to support each other. So thank you. Any other thoughts or questions? I hope this was helpful uh, to to just even start to talk about child life. So Jata, would you like to close the session then? Because I think it is 5.30 or past 5.30. Ma'am, your mic is not on. Yes, Savita, you can start. Gratitude is not only the greatest of virtues, but the parent of all other. Good evening to all. It gives me an immense pleasure to deliver out of thanks to all the dignitaries present today for the Think Tank Capacity Building Workshop on enhancing the psychosocial well-being of children and families in healthcare settings. First and foremost, I would like to thank our beloved principal, Dr. Sister Apuna, for always encouraging and supporting us in all the endeavors. I would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to our head of the department, Dr. Sujata Gupta Keda, for her constant support motivation, encouragement, and I'm sure without man's support, this wouldn't have been possible. This event wouldn't have been possible. I would like to extend a gratitude to our speaker for the day, Dr. Preeti Desai, for taking out time from her busy schedule to be with us this evening. Ma'am, 
thank you for always being with the Department of Human Development, Mount Carmel College, and enlightening us about the new area that is child life. I would like to thank Ms. Deepa Parikh, Ms. Swati Sheik Mehta, and Ms. Parminder Wadwani for hosting the sessions and patiently picking up all the queries raised by the participants. I would like to extend my thanks to my fellow colleagues, Ms. Lingeshwari, Ms. Shreya, and Dr. Nivedita. Last but not the least, I would like to thank all the participants for taking part in the event. And uh, dear participant, I also request you all to fill up the feedback forms before you leave. Thank you, everyone. And uh, sorry, Parminder, I'm really sorry. I really want to apologize for this technical issue that happened. Um, no, no, ma'am. Please, please, ma'am. Do not, please do not apologize. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to at least talk to one participant. I really love no, no, from no, no. I'm really, really sorry because we were just running here and there. And uh, no, no. anyway, I understand, I ma'am. Sure. No, no, ma Thank please you don't so be much apologize. for being here. Thank you, so Thank you so much, Deepa. I haven't met you at all. So, but I'm really, really, uh, you know, uh, grateful that you have, in the last minute, we actually, ma'am, told to you i think she requested you and you yes. are here and really really thankful thank you so much most and, yes and thank you swati i couldn't see her so i yeah, swati I, where's swati is she here is someone taking so a much. picture of this uh our little hi i'm uh, here this is swati yes, can we take a snapshot first can for we this? someone take a snapshot yes mom yes mom yeah that would be nice say cheese <laughs> say cheese <laughs> Thank you so much, Preeti. It's a pleasure yes. listening to you every time. You know, it's been 10, 11, 12 years, I think. <laughs> and the association with you is really, really great. And thank you for always being there for us. Thank yes, you. Yes, and I cannot, I just don't have enough words to uh, uh, express my appreciation for you. I, it, it makes me so happy. I'm sitting here in Ahmedabad and I have you know my fellow indians from all over the country and uh, it just gives me great joy so thank you for making that happen and making you know having the opportunity to share something that i am very passionate about and you know learning what is already going on um you know so that that's that's just amazing and please thank sister for me for you know giving us this platform and lingeshwari and natasha and all you people you know i'm in awe of your technical skills and your hosting skills. I, I greatly appreciate that partnership. And I hope that we can do more of this. Um, yes, and please, the participants who are still here, if you truly are interested, like, um, uh, you know, uh, is it Parul from, uh, from near Lucknow? Uh, if you all are still interested, you know, please reach out because we can do a lot. It may be slow, but like Swati is doing a 600 hour internship and I'm supervising her and Parminder is supervising her um, and it's going to be officially approved through the Association for Child Life Professionals. So, you know, we can work those things. Deepa should be able to do something like that too in Pune. Yes. Um, so, um, uh, so we have all kinds of possibilities. Um, so in, again, like I said, we don't all have to be a, a CCLS to do this work because um, we just have to have the right intention and the right awareness. And then uh, hopefully, uh, Dr. Sujata, with time, we can make things more formal. I know Swati is very interested in, in that and as is Parminder and Deepa. So hopefully we're on to some starting something. A think tank, as you know, is something where people who have similar interests get together and think and organize and brainstorm and then it's, it's not a full stop now. Um, now we could be hooked into further uh, conversations and discussions. And so, you know, we might do this again in another three months for not for everyone, but those who truly are interested in, and do some follow up. So again, thank you so much, everyone. I appreciate it. Sujata, thank you. And thank Parminder you. and Deepa and Swati, thank you again. Thank you. Please don't forget to fill the uh, feedback, which is yes, in the chat box. Yes, has been sent that chat, uh, feedback form. All right. Okay. okay, so should, all right. Yeah. All right, well, thank you so much. Should we, can we leave the, the conference? Yes, uh, the, I think we can all leave now.
Okay. But don't forget to fill the feedback. I'm talking to the participants should not, uh, uh, you know, miss on that. <laughs> yes, please, please <laughs> fill it out. Um, and please tell us your ideas and, you know, what you liked and what we could do more of because we like and, that uh, feedback. I just want to tell you, if you fill the feedback only, then you will get a certificate. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so please fill the feedback. Thank Sounds you. good. All right. Okay. Thank okay. you so much. Bye, everyone. Bye, Deepa. Bye.